Hi, it's good to be back, Nabila, establishing a reputation as one of the country's rising acting stars. His recent Hamlet, which has just ended a tour of Britain, received rave reviews. Nabil arrived on the scene when he co-founded Grey Eye Theatre Company in 1980. Grey Eye was set up to give opportunities to actors who are disabled, but also to challenge the public's stereotyped view of disability with a mixture of humour and harangue. But Nabil reached a wider audience on Channel 4's opening night when he starred with Ian McKellen in Walter. The following year, another Channel 4 production, The Skin Horse, which explored the sexuality of disability, caused an outcry. But with stage roles such as The Emperor in Jonathan Miller's Royal Court production, he broke the mould. His portrayal of Haile Selassie saw him emerge from under the umbrella of stock disabled casting. His recent Hamlet only served to emphasise the point. Nabil Shaban now has a foot very firmly in both camps. But it's not all been heavy drama. His slug in Doctor Who has ensured Nabil many younger fans. And so the irony of the part he didn't get, turned down by Granada for the role of Erasmus Microman because it was thought he would frighten the children. So kids, brace yourselves, Nabil's with us in the studio, talking with Peter. Nabil, you obviously resented losing that Granada part, but isn't that just the sort of slap in the face that any actor has to be prepared to take, including a disabled actor? Depends on whether one is given a clear enough uh, reason as to why they weren't getting the part. In my case, it was all too clear. John Slater stated categorically over the phone to me when I demanded to know why I'd not got the part after he'd made it quite clear that he wanted me for the part namely that uh, he had found that the people at Granada had expressed the fear that ch too many children would find me too frightening on account of my disability, my wheelchair. You have at times, I mean, exploited your, the sort of sinister approach a bit. Um, is there a tendency of you wanting your cake and eating it? Not at all. I mean, able-bodied actors can play sinister parts and uh, good parts. Why should a disabled person be discriminated just because they occasionally play sinister parts? Does the Hamlet role and the Emperor role that you recently played mean the end of, uh, if you like, stereotype disabled parts as far as you're concerned? I hope so. And not just for me, but for other disabled performers. Why do you object to that so much? After all, um, people do play themselves. Um, tall, strong, blonde people are played, uh, are selected to play tall, strong, blonde people. Yeah, but uh, tall, I mean, that's just a physical appearance, isn't it? That's not personality as such. I mean, a, a, a tall, strong, blonde person can be nice, can be nasty, can be humorous, can be sad. Um, but often, uh, with respect to people with disabilities, they have a characteristic which is just one dimensional and uh, that's the problem uh, and that's what one objects to is playing one dimensional caricatures does that mean you think there are perhaps dangers in the way in that you took after all you selected um your disability with grey eye you used it to campaign to harangue people but in a sense that's going to identify you as a disabled person albeit an angry one well, I mean, the thing about Grey Eye, the start of Grey Eye, is that um, one is doing a show describing to the able-bodied public how the able-bodied see disabled people. When talking about disability, you've always used humour in your performances. Do you think there's any danger that backfires? There is the danger that if, an able, if the able-bodied public or able-bodied comedians see uh, a disabled person taking the piss out of themselves or taking the piss out of, you know, aspects of disability, but they think it gives them a ticket to do likewise. Doesn't it? Um, it does if they're stupid, if they're thick, if they don't understand why um, a disabled person is doing it. Th there's always a place to remind people um, of, of their prejudices. The, the thing is, um, people have short memories and regimes come and go and uh, economic uh, uh, structures change and consequently one is continually having to remind people of the uh, inequalities and prejudices that exist in society. 
personally, I don't want to do anything that isn't, uh, that doesn't involve changing attitudes. And my play in Hamlet, and the way I play Hamlet, um, is part of my campaign to change attitudes. Oh, you, you host of heaven! Oh, earth! What else? And shall I couple hell? Oh, fine. Hold, hold my heart. Remember thee? I, thou poor ghost, whilst memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee? Yea, from the table of my memory I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all swords of books, all forms, all precious past that you for observation copied there. And thy commandments all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain. That one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure it may be so in Denmark. So, Uncle, there you are. And now, to my word, it is a duel. A duel. Remember me! Nabil Shaban. Shall 